doing these probabilities. How do I do it? Well, there is an observed value of the test statistic, and there is a non centrality parameter, which basically combine, I take this value, subtract for different discrepancies. I have to be careful with that, but this is very close to one, so I can ignore it. And this is what happens when my discrepancy is 0.01. Remember, this is 50 is the null, 0.01, this is the, uh, the tail area less than this difference. In other words, less than that, 1.5. And I do that for all values of, of gamma. Okay, I, so I believe your severity function, or the function of theta 1, is the exact common distribution. Yeah, <laughs> so you get the number. So whatever the severity calculation is, the common distribution, you produce that. Yes. Confidence curve is one of the things. But that's where the p-value comes in. The p-value is a value that the null, but it depends whether you go left or right there. So uh, here is what happens with the evaluations. So 0.1 is very large, 0.12 or 0.12, it, and it decreases. I have to decide and defend why I'm basically chopping the, uh, the 0.85. That is, like every other inference, the part of where we can debate and disagree with. But here, because I only had 10,000 observations, I didn't want to go to 0.95. This makes more sense. So, so with gamma is going to point of 1, your yes. severity is 0.94. Yes. And what, your p-value is very small in, in that case? There's only one p-value. What is it? Well, well, in this particular case, it's 0.05. Yes. So that's a problem, don't you think? Because what's going on is that you have a very small effect size. Your p-value is small just because of your huge sample size. The, the p-value is looking at the wrong at the wrong tail. But it's looking it's a function of a sample size. It's very small because of the sample size. Yeah, I am looking as well because when I evaluate this, I have the non centrality parameter which is what plays a role yeah. in, in the. Yeah. Don't you think my evidence is very weak? Here? Yeah, this is where severity picks up the uh, the effect from the sample size. It's part of it. Right. But don't you think the evidence is very small in, when gamma is going to point five? Very, very strong. With, it, the, the difference is quite immaterial. It's yeah, significant, here, but it's immaterial. Here I'm looking for the biggest discrepancy I can justify on a high severity. So, yeah, I can justify the small discrepancy, but that's not what I'm, what I'm interested in. I'm saying I'm the difference the is very important. Yes. And the severity test doesn't pick that up. I'm interested in going as far to the right as I can. Not here. So this is the, the line, and this is basically roughly where. No, but can you address the issue? That with gamma is going to put a one, the difference is significant statistically, but not important. I don't want to do another test. This is a post data evaluation of the test I already did. All right, but the difference is not important, right? It is important. No, no, it's significant, but not important. It's 0.51. I, I don't yeah. worry about that until I go to uh, the substantive significance. Uh, yeah. Just so, instead of saying important, you mm. say warranted. We don't know yet if it's... Whether it's statistically significant and, and substantive, it's a different issue. I haven't even addressed that. So here I'm playing this game and say statistics will take the least part mm -hmm. for that uh, thing. Now, that gives me an upper bound. It cannot be bigger than that. So it gives me an up and bound there, and then say, well, do I have something from human biology which tells me this number? And the answer is yes, I do. So other people would have calculated a confidence interval, and then talked, of, and then looked at whether it was substantially significant. Why, uh, why do this? Why do something? Here different? I have a particular value that I know uh, what substantively significant <laughs> is, and I will no, give you the but, value but in a second. You weren't going to go there yet. Here, biology. Yes, I'm saying. I can distinguish between statistical and substantive significance. I, I understood that, but before you get there... Yes, well, statistics takes me as far as that describes. This new kind of interval, this severity interval. Yes, why, this is what, as far we, as statistics... Why do we need that when we already have a confidence interval? Because the confidence interval has nothing to do with any of these calculations. Have you ever evaluated the confidence interval with an centrality parameter to take account of this sample size? I haven't seen anybody do that. The confidence interval has the issue is that you fix level of test. So if you want to make a decision, so. level of level significance, right? 95, yeah. 0.05. Why is 0.05? This severity uh, function will give you all possible kind of 
choice of possible values. But he had to choose a number here, 0.85. If you make decision, yes. But you if can, you make decision, if you don't make decision, you give the whole picture to us. This is the same thing as a couple. There's, a, there's yeah. a one to one correspondence between whatever these numbers you see here with the, the set of possible hypothesis tests you yeah. could have done. I, I, I wouldn't give you. I, you just I, stay I, over I can here. give you. I can the, tell you. I'm going to give you the whole thing. If you're here, testing, just, if you're you testing, about, if I were to draw the line here and then look at substantively significant, what am I going to find out? This is a curve. This is not just two points or three points. It's the whole thing. Yeah, this is a whole picture. Yes. But you can read off all, essentially, a yes. whole class of tests you might you can conceive have, yourself doing but from here. Can I say just one thing? That sure. confidence interval lacks an, an adequate interpretation because of the fact that at most you can say it came from a, a, a method with certain coverage probabilities. With, once you give it the testing spin, which severity gives you, you'll say, why do we say that mu is, that there's evidence that mu is greater than the lower bound of the confidence interval? Because if it was less than, if mu were less than the lower bound of the confidence interval, with high probability, we would have gotten a larger difference than we did. My point is, this is that even where you get this match number, this is the yes. So here I can look people in the eye and say, at 0.85 severity, uh, the warranted discrepancy is slightly bigger than the biologically determined discrepancy, so I can claim substantive significance. One of the reasons I use this example is because I have something concrete to compare it to. This is a whole book about that particular issue. So and they're all kind 0 0.5122, two, two. can we go back to the table and see where that is? Yeah. 0 0.5122. Two, two. Here's the point five one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm just going slightly bigger than that, but that's that's all. That's why that's the, that's the threshold there. Yeah. So your severity should should be higher than point eight five for, for well how, well, how you no no this is this is if I determine point eight five for a decision is is correctly was said. I would say it cannot be bigger than this discrepancy. Okay. It cannot be bigger than that. There's an upper bound there. Okay. And, and that's why uh, I look whether that upper bound includes the substantively significant uh, value. Now here I do devil's advocates and change the null and the alternative and map around. I don't have to, time to go through, but the severity doesn't change at all. You can change your alpha, you can turn the rejection to an acceptance if you want, but it's, if it's positive, you're looking at discrepancies in the right, on the right of that, and so on. So uh, here, I do that with a different value instead of 0.5. This is Nicholas Bernoulli. Around 1835, says so it's not half, it's 18 over 35. I am basically 18 boys to 17. That was a response to the odd, not paper. Yes. And I'm saying, any, would anything change if I change the 0.5 to that and test again? The answer is, these numbers are exactly the same. No, you know, nothing is going to change. The discrepancies will change because I'm starting from a different point, but these numbers are identical to the previous. So now that will happen, and this 0.05 versus 0.049 and so on nonsense doesn't work at all. The severity is not going to change. It's not going to be affected by accept reject and, and all of that sharp dichotomies and, and, and all that jazz. And of course, how do we address this fallacy of rejection because of the sample size? Here I show the relationship between, uh, let's say, the p value and the severity evaluation, which is under the null, basically, what you're pointing out. But that's not what we're interested in. We need, to, under the alternative, so we'll be able to have information about the sensitivity of the test in picking up and taking that into account. So that's, that's the reason why this is important. And here I have a nice example to show you how the sample size uh, comes in with the severity here. So I'm interested in this discrepancy of, of point 0.2. If my sample size is only 50, the severity of that point is close to 0.95. But if it's 150, it reduces to 0 
If it's 400, it's 0.5 or very close. If it's 1,000, it's tiny. This is the sensitivity in action because I'm using the non centrality parameter with the sample size in order to shrink what you're warranted to claim about the severity of this particular discrepancy. I, of course, we have diagrams where we change the discrepancy and so on, but this is, gives you an instant picture of how this evidential uh, account, if you like, takes that fully into account. Here is uh, where the, I compare this reality with observed quantum intervals and basically say that the way we do it with the in 2006 is actually to replace the gamma with some of these numbers that come from uh, confidence intervals. Because we are looking at a discrepancy here. And we said, what if the gamma relates to this number here or to that number there? But then, of course, we showed that different uh, points within the confidence interval have very different uh, similarity. And in particular, this has always similarity 0.5, very low. And then we show how you can actually evaluate the severity of the, of the inferential claim, bigger than or less than. But that has nothing to do with the coverage probability. Absolutely nothing to do with it. This is testing reasoning and is under uh, the alternative and so on and so forth. So it's testing reasoning, and of course, uh, this, the coincidence at the endpoints is not uh, the answer to it. So yes, there is mathematical duality between confidence intervals and, and uh, hypothesis tests, name and piece of tests, but it's a mathematical uh, duality, not an inferential duality at all. One goes with the coverage probability, the other goes with power and type 1 errors and all that. Yes. We are looking at tail areas which are the same. But they, the, uh, the reasoning and the interpretation, because we don't attach probabilities to theaters. We attach probabilities to the inferential claims. And that is the probability remains on the procedure, the testing procedure. It's not leaving that and goes and touches itself on the theater. Yes. So uh, can you come back to your table? You, here you can claim it's not coverage. It is different uh, than the... Uh the confidence interval for this one, right? No, no, just let me... Oh, just let me. this is when I switched... The, the, this, yeah, this table. Okay. So, uh, if you repeat the experiment many other times, I believe that uh, if you would have 82... Uh, you just look at the whatever, the, uh, the one that's the uh, 852, that's the third yeah. column. So you will... 85.2% yes. of them will be... In, in, Bigger than that, uh, the point five yeah, one two. I, I agree with you. So uh, that is confidence, the interpretation that of that. Yeah, you have to reject the hypothesis that right. five one two. I know what you're saying. Yeah. If if I replicate it in the usual way and look at the tailor, yes, right. I will get the it result. Is confident, yeah. Yes, but, it but is. you have to be very careful I, I because it won't work because dx zero is data specific. You have to be careful. Right. So for the type one error. Yes, because you use the, the uniformity under the null. For the alternative, the distribution is, skew, is, is skewed, so it changes. You have to right, be very right, careful. Under, under the null, yeah. Yes. Under the true, exactly the same model you repeat. That's okay. Then that's confidence, right? right. In that sense, right? Under the true, under the yes, yeah. we are all on the same, on the same yeah. But not when you change new at oh, will. Yeah, and that's, that's really different. The yeah, that's different. You have different models. Right? Yeah. Uh, here, again, we've seen that. Let me see whether there's anything interesting. And then I'll... Uh, yes, this is comparing data from Cyprus in 1993 and output notes data for 1634. I chose that date because the sample size is very close to the sample size I have for, for Cyprus, which was around 10,500. So I do the severities for both the warranty discrepancies and for... 0.85, this is what I get. Very close upper bounds. That for me is a kind of replication. There's no reason why that phenomenon was true in London 
1634 and in Cyprus in 1993. And, and I want to relate some of this to a more broader, uh, let's say, data sets. Summary, replicability, let's disconnect the two uh, because we, we, we are confusing ourselves. The problem is not just abuse of, of p-values and, and all the rest that goes with it. It's much more broad and I summarize there. And of course, um, this observed confidence intervals and, and estimation-based effect sizes are really vulnerable to exactly the same things. So the misclassification will mess them up completely and, and, and some of the rest of those problems will affect those uh, in the same way. And of course, uh, the post data at this point is the best tool to get a, an evidential interpretation that can be used to talk about uh, statistical versus substantial significance and, and solve a lot of these problems uh, that Neville Pearson was suffering for the last, I don't know, 80 years. So this is what the Earl Statistical Perspective is trying to do. It's uh, a broad enough for anybody to address this one, two, three problems that I raised above uh, and the different ways that untrustworthiness can come into your evidence, bring out these common sources of confusion, uh, frequent inference, and then I, there is something I psychologists call not hypothesis. Uh, yeah. And I don't recognize what that is. And I've been teaching statistics for 40 years. It did not need to do with, this is a caricature that really tell, enables them to say all kinds of things. And of course, the post data similarity will help uh, solve some of these outstanding problems that have been around for ages, of course. The Lanshan problem has been around for since 1980, sorry, 1938. And both Carl Pearson and Fisher had a go, but neither was able to explain what's going on. Thanks for your patience. I know it's late. So, so, um, so who called it the large end problem? Because yeah. when yeah. Bergson brought it up, he basically says... Did he call it that? Yes. He basically says, when I look at uh, the results of these tests, all I can deduce is the sample size. Every time the sample size is large enough to reject... Which, which person said this? No, this is Bergson. 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 Yes. Uh, uh, Psychologist. Yes. 1938, but he provoked both Carl Pearson uh, and Fisher in a, in a change in early 1930s. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So, uh, I think a couple of things. Uh, one thing is the, uh, but the graph was talking about. I, I think the new, well, the histogram is actually the, is a sample uh, distribution, not the C. It's also not the R severity. It's a shift of the survival. Are you talking about this graph? No, no, not like the previous. Yeah, the this is why I will come back to the second uh, question, actually. Yeah. The first one is the, 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 the oh, one. Ask the question. I mean, uh, ask the question. Okay. That one actually is not C. It's no, I think it's before. Yeah, yeah, before that, before that, before that. That's more. Uh, it's a shift of the CD. It's yeah, a, no. yeah, it's a shift yeah. of the CD. And also, yeah. this is sample distribution, actually, right? Is empirical sample distribution of what happens. Right. Yes. So then that's a CD is a shift of that. Your severity also is shift of function of the CD too. So you set it at the uh, observe but, the beta you, one. You, you have to do the replications so you, for the discrepancies. Let, let, let's put your severity function, take derivative. The density version of your severity function, you plug it over here. So it's not going to work unless you put B, beta one plus the discrepancy and redo this because otherwise the tables you're looking at are moving with the discrepancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying is that so you have observed beta hat, so you're going to peak on the beta hat, but the tail part is going to be your function is going to be exactly the shift of this distribution. No, it's a tail area. Yeah, you're yeah, absolutely yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And so that's you have basically the, the same the thing. The tail area. You take the exactly it. mathematically exactly the same thing. Yeah. So that one is actually exactly the same thing. One sided common distribution, used, uh, common distribution is the one. Uh, the other one is that I think this is, I, I seems more convinced that severity is a common distribution, and the common distribution is a severity function. And yes. the uh, second thing is that you mentioned that the problem with the confidence curve. The problem of confidence curve is two sided test. 
So it's not giving you the right story. So if you do I can I can be one sided. Yes. No, if you don't know the confidence curve, confidence curve is always two sided. If you just do one sided confidence, usually I I, did, I have a whole paper on this. That is one -sided, sided, exactly two -sided, two -sided, same as that. And compare them. They give the same numbers. Whether you you look at them through the p value curve or reverse the. Uh, the Way you're looking at, right, 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 yeah. because there's a trade-off between the alpha changing with uh, the alternative, and, and of course uh, you're just picking up that trend. No, exactly. My expression is exactly the same. One side, the confidence distribution is exactly the same as what your severity function. It, with the severity, we always have that issue that is the problem that matters. It's not. It's the reasoning and how you interpret the results. So, so I agree that there is. Uh, family resemblance, and we can discuss that. Really and we can see some of the common, uh, let's say, uh, yeah. or the overlap between the two. What you're doing to get the uh, equivalence is you're switching what you're testing. And Aaron doesn't like that. No. I'm, I'm more inclined to allow that. Yeah. You're, you're hypothetically saying, were I to be testing this, what, no, what uh, results would... Yeah, they're, they're, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, otherwise. And that's what you have to do to make the duality. I'm going to ask you a question, but sure. uh, you know, I've checked the literature, and a few people in the literature have leveled a charge against the testing. I did ask the question uh, with Deborah, and I'm going to. Uh, I want to know what your take is. The common criticism has been with uh, base. Have you read about it? A lot of authors have said it. I got the base rate fallacy. So you have a test that has a very high sensitivity very high specificity, and it's supposed to be, uh, the test is supposed to be very severe, as, as, but because of a base rate, you have a very low uh, pos uh, posterior probability. The problem is, false positive, false negative has absolutely nothing to do so with that's about, that So that's why you, you said that at the very start, right? Exactly. <laughs> it, it's nonsense. But it's have you seen the criticism? Yeah, I published papers on this. On the criticism of a yes, base rate? A exactly, lot of the base rate, rate. exactly. They mm. say, stop it. Mm. I show them what the test looks in that context mm. and all these other nonsense that they, they throw around. I have nothing to do with conditional probabilities, mm. nothing. But error probabilities are not. So you've addressed that in a paper? Yes. You said it to me? Yes, I did. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. So uh, the other thing, is, well, we're talking about the test. Actually, confidence distribution does not have to be right to test, right? You don't need to use test to do your confidence distribution. Right. right. So uh, we do not need to test in the false stuff, like say the false thing or whatever it is, to get how about this confidence distribution. We have many different ways to do that. But uh, the, in, I think the confidence intervals need improvements, and the improvements can come from a testing perspective, for example, to distinguish between the different points in the interval as by the inferences well, so to right. the right. Otherwise, it, it's just this, this is an interval and they're all compatible in the sense that you couldn't reject with this outcome, but that doesn't mean you have evidence for them. Right, I think so, we're, we're not going to, well, when we go evaluate from confidence interval to confidence distribution, we never look at the intervals because intervals are not right thing to do. As the intervals always give you a level that's kind of a very fixed level. You make a decision. 0.15 is fine. If you decide in this practice I'm using a decision is 0.15, then that's fine. You just take it. But then if we're not making a decision, it was two, it was two hours. <laughs> we want to look at what data tells us. Then what they tell us how uncertain our data is about our statement, then the confidence distribution is right way to do it. Because you look at all different kind of possibilities doing that. It's exactly what your severity function is doing that. You say, hey, yeah. what is the all this range of possibilities? What are their kind of you, you give them sort of every probability kind of statement, say, hey, how that different range is going to be. So this is exactly what we're trying to say is that different value on the parameter space. How uncertain it is. That's basically an uncertain yeah. quantification yeah. thing. It's exactly you the same thing. You have to be able to imagine these counterfactuals, in a sense, in mm -hmm. the testing world, to be able to say anything about the severity. Because mm -hmm. it it, there's this contrapositive of had it not been right. right? So you have to be able to imagine uh, every single case of theta b, this value, right. this value, this value. Right. So it, it, I think my reading of CD is that it was never taken to mean that this is just 
people just say that this is a distributional estimator of the parameter. It doesn't necessarily t attach probability to, right. it doesn't necessarily the, the, claim that the theta has to be a random thing or, or anything. It's just a way to describe it. There are it. many people who do with the confidence interval. Confidence and, interval, and they're maybe. more inclined to these days than ever, it seems assign the probability to the particular interval. Yeah, that's not but they're right. unclear no. about what they mean. Um, yeah, that's before. Matt Law, for example, and he said, we, we don't like tests. And I say, that's because you want to assign the probability to your interval. And he said, that's right, because this is a method that 90% of the time, whatever it is, would have gotten me the uh, correct answer. So I assign it to this case. But didn't Fraser do that, too? Doesn't Fraser? Fraser is doing this too, yes. But then Fraser is kind of between the frequency and the fiducia, right? So there's some sort of fiducia idea behind this. The probability is assigned before the observation. Once the observation is made, it's either inside or outside. The probability is then goes to the procedure. That's the, that's the textbook uh, you know, explanation. Sure. Yeah. But that's not what yeah. Yeah. A lot of people don't do that because they are wrong. So the confidence interval can be pre-observation with probability, post-observation when it, it doesn't, it's not probability. But yeah, I think, I think to me is the uh, confidence is that if you repeat this a lot of times, what's the chance you're getting? It's not the probability of something, it's the confidence, right? It is that you're repeating many times. What is the, how many times you're repeating the same statement? Coverage probability. But not necessarily coverage probability, but right? it's, well, I, I, think I, I think I know yeah, what you're saying. Yeah. That's when you start to move into testing reasoning, to me. I would say, yeah. why do we have uh, evidence that you know, mu is greater than the lower bound? Because if it were less than the high probability, we would have gotten a bigger result. That's how I like to reason it out. Yeah. So all these things are talking about the uncertainty, right? It, Severity is about uncertainty. After you post data, then look at uncertainty. Confidence distribution is also talking about uncertainty. Bayesian posterior actually is also talking about uncertainty. Then just different words, you use different kind of group using different words. Is it probability or confidence or different ways to state it? I, I, that's what I, I don't know, I might be wrong, but I think that's how I I really think so. I think maybe to, to, just to the, put it differently, severity is asking for Certainty, which is the right. exactly certainty, one minus yeah. the uncertainty. Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. It is attached to the statement. How well warranted. Yes. yes. And yes. it's yes. really back yeah. to the you know, Paparian idea of what's the probability your method would have found a flaw if it's there. Right, right. right. It's passed a test that would have found right. a mistake. I must have left my and the formulation of that would have to rely on a probabilistic yes. statement of with high probability, the probability uh, well, associated to the method. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think there are overlaps of these concepts. I think we probably definitely in the you're one, looking into that, right? <laughs> in, the one, in all of these one-sided cases that has been presented, the severity function is a p-value function. Mm -hmm. um, if you go beyond that, which is a copy, you know, well, you're telling me that maybe it's not a good idea to go beyond that, but I think it certainly should go beyond that, and that will make a difference. You probably need to ask them to say if it's two sided test, what price point, what is not. So, well, is always you would say, David, you just go with the whichever observed side. And Most of those cases, Sorry. I think, I agree with Are you still Hinkley, who say that we should look at it as two yeah, one sided tests. Okay. No, Unless okay, you're yeah. not interested in the direction. Let's this is being taped. You can still frame it as the test. We have to, to edit out there was an F word. And that's, we have to that's edit it out. Then you get a confidence curse. I don't know. But everybody can talk about this, right? At some point. Yeah, we are. Well, Terry, do you have me for December? Yeah, so we can continue then. Yeah. Or at dinner. Why don't we move. Wrap it up or. But thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Great pleasure to be here. Thank you guys. Thanks for